This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi. So in this case, apart from showing the combined surgery of phacotrabeclectomy, just wanted to highlight the appearance of these postcapsule folds or the postcapsule trampolining. Elderly man who has pseudo exfoliative glaucoma, he has this dense brown cataract and an advanced glaucoma which was documented by previous records and he required a targeted trochlear pressure of about 14 or less and so we decided to do a combined surgery. So I'll be performing a single site phacotrab surgery in this patient. Mitomycin C injection is given in the subtenant space. The conjunctival flap is being created. My plan is to use a triangular flap, which is what I typically use. This is a around 4 to 5 mm long incision. The depth of the plane is decided by the appearance of the blade under the flap. It should be just be visible. And that indicates that the plane is ideal and we don't have a too thick a flap or too thin a flap. As I'm tunneling towards the limbus area now, so the two different endpoints for creating a tunnel. The first end point has stopped at the limbus. The second end point is going to be about 2 mm inside the limbus. And this is going to be a very small central area which is not more than 2 mm in width and it ends approximately about 2 mm beyond the limbus. This is where I stop. So once the tunnel incision is created, time to deal with the anti-capsule created excess. The capsule is stained. Now I need to enter the main incision. OVD is injected into the eye and using a forceps and performing the rexus. The rexus is done. I'm expecting weak zonules in this patient because of pseudo exfoliation and hence cortical cleaving hydrodissection becomes a very important step here. I'm using dispersive OVD to protect the endothelium. I create a small initial trench so that I get access to the core of the nucleus, then bury the phaco tip and then perform vertical chop. Again, all the standard prescribed protocols are followed in this case as well so that we don't have turbulence and the lens fragments are aspirated in a very controlled manner. I'm going to fast forward the nucleus management. The last part of the nucleus is aspirated without much of a fuss. Time to deal with the cortex. Again, I need to be aware that I might be dealing with a loose bag here. I'm trying to use tangential technique for stripping the cortex. The hands are switched. As I'm aspirating the last part of cortex, suddenly I see this line inside the posterior capsule. It looks like multiple folds and this was discomforting. I was not sure what's going wrong here. I come out and I'm just trying to form the chamber and trying to irrigate. And I can see that the posterior capsule is just trampolining and it's folding all around. So I just go back and try to refill the chamber and form the bag with viscoelastic and try to finish the job of aspirating this last bit of cortex but the severity of the capsule being folded and trampolining is very much evident now. So this was a cause for concern and uh, I had not seen this sign very often. So my initial diagnosis was again the capsule is trampolining or folding because of weak zonules and this is more evident now because the bag is empty of the bulky nucleus. That was my initial judgment and I addressed this issue. I thought we have to stretch the bag and add some traction to it by, you know, using a CTR. I'm putting in OVD, sodium hyaluronate, into the capsular bag. And then the capsule tension ring is being threaded into it. And let's see whether by inserting the CTR, the folds in the posterior capsule, they disappear. The ring is gently manipulated into the bag. Capsule looks all right. The multi-piece uh, intraocular lens is being placed into the bag now. At this stage, I think I'll just leave the lens there with the OVD still inside the eye. In the chamber formed, now is the time to perform the trabeclectomy. I go back and uh, I'm going to create my internal block, which is approximately measuring about 2 mm by 1 mm. I'm using a side port sharp plate to do the initial cruise and then the internal scleral tissue is then excised with the help of a forceps. Now is the time to perform the aridectomy. A broad basal aridectomy is done. Time to close the scleral flap. 
Uh, in the meantime, I go ahead and remove all the OVD both in front and behind the lens. Time to close the conjunctival uh, flap. Before finishing, I just hydrate the side port and we can see that the bleb is formed here. To rewind, appearance of these postcapsule folds or the postcapsule trampolining. This is because whenever we empty the bag and the which was occupying a very large dense nucleus and combined with it when the postcapsule becomes lax because of weak zonules, we are going to see these uh, postcapsule folds which are more likely to trampoline and get caught in aspiration port which can result in PC tear. So it is important for us to understand and identify these signs intraoperatively. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.